So as an ex-Magic player turned flesh and blood world champion, I'm going to be giving my completely unbiased and obviously expert opinion on which game is more difficult, flesh and blood or Magic. So first things first, why should you even care? And well, it's because I think the difficulty can determine multiple things in games such as balance and fairness. It'll also show us the expected longevity of a game. And lastly, TCGs are just expensive. Not only in money, but time and effort as well. This video will help you to make an informed decision on where to invest your important resources. So how we're going to figure out all of these things is we're going to be comparing the difficulty of each game to each other. And the first way we're going to do it is with the game mechanics. So comparing the game mechanics of Magic and Fab is the same as comparing salt to sugar. Imagine introducing someone who has no knowledge of salt or sugar to both and asking them to tell you the differences. They would probably say that they're the same, right? Now take that same person and have them do that same thing after watching a game of Magic and a game of Fab. Again, they probably think they look the exact same with the amount of things that the game share with each other. Things like PvP, turn structures, card types, card abilities, resource management, deck archetypes, the list goes on and on and on. It all just looks the same. However, just like the case of Salt and Sugar, it's when you finally taste both that you realize that although they look identical, they are actually the complete opposite to one another. So to properly judge the taste of MTG to Fab, we have to talk about the two main distinctions that they have from one another, and that is the resource systems and the draw steps. These distinctions, much like the distinction between salt and sugar, completely shape the entire experience that each game has to offer. So Magic's resource system is lands. Lands tap for mana and you use that mana to cast your spells, with players only being able to play one land each turn, whereas in Flesh and Blood, the resource system is pitching. Players pitch a card from their hand by placing it into what What's called a pitch zone. The color of that card determines how many resources you gain from pitching it. You then use those resources to cast your spells. And at the end of the turn, cards that were pitched that turn go to the bottom of the player's deck. And so these systems have a lot of implications on how the games are actually played, with Magic players slowly getting more and more mana as the game goes on, meaning generally that the players are getting stronger the longer the game goes. This is also shown because the more a card costs to play, the stronger that card usually is. On the other hand, in Flesh and Blood, players use their hands as both resources and spells. This means fab players have access to do more powerful things earlier in the game, with fab games maintaining that same pace throughout. Now we must combine the resource systems of each games with their respective draw step rules as well. With players in Magic drawing one card per turn at the start of your turn, this system just furthers the slower pace start to each Magic game, with players being gated behind not only playing only one land per turn, but also one draw per turn. As opposed to Flesh and Blood, where players draw until they have four cards in their hand at the end of their turn. Pair the fact that we're drawing four cards every turn with the fast paced pitch system. This leads the flesh and blood games to feeling not only more fast paced, but also more consistent. With players each drawing four cards every turn, this already opens up a degree of difficulty to be able to use each of these cards effectively. But when you pair this with the fact that you can utilize each card in multiple ways, through playing them, blocking with them, or pitching them. This leaves fab players with a minimum of 81 different ways to play every single turn cycle, starting from turn one. So if we took our theories on the difficulty of each game, and put them on a graph. Magic having a slower start, but most likely having the edge later on, with Flesh and Blood's fast paced beginning and steady consistency with the amount of cards you draw per turn, I think the graphs would look a little like this. And I'm no data analysis, but what I am is a multi-world champion of both games. Yep. <clears throat> And after assessing the data given to me in these graphs, I can say in my completely honest and humble opinion, fab is harder. So after watching this vid, if you're thinking of getting into flesh and blood, or if you're just looking to expand your fab collection, make sure to go check out Midtown Game Exchange, your one-stop shop for flesh and blood cards at the most affordable prices that you'll find on the internet. I'll leave a link to their shop in the description. Make sure you go check it out. But now also, if you're stuck wondering which fab deck you should try first, check out this video where we compare decks from both Magic and Flesh and Blood to each other to help you choose the exact deck that you should try in the opposite game.